Hello YouTube, we are back again for a video and today we are going to be reviewing the Legacy Blaster, I guess it was also the uh, the Kingdom Blaster, and then we are doing a G1 reissue and just kind of comparing these two side by side, packaging and functions and um, obviously Blaster with Eject. And if you do, if you would help us try to grow this channel, hit that like button and subscribe and follow us and see, you know, we'll try to come out with new videos as often as we can. We don't get to them every week, but we try to. So on the right here, we have the newly packaged Legacy Blaster. It's got pictures of him on the, on the front in a, or a boombox mode. On the side, you have him in robot mode. And then over here it shows him and a couple other Autobots. Uh, looks like a nice legacy logo at the bottom. And on the back you have him with Eject. A little bit closer picture of Eject. I'm not sure why they did him in like a translucent blue, but I mean I like it, but I kind of like the original better, but I'm just a hardcore G1 fan. And then of course in robot mode with his gun and in boombox mode at the bottom. Pretty cool box. Yep, legacy logo on top. One thing I dislike about the packaging nowadays is I love this window look they had in the original one, and they had they had them in alternate mode. But all these newer ones are in here, and they had these little probably about fifty little I don't know what you call them like plastic ties to keep them from being stolen or moved around inside the package. I do miss the original G1 type. Of packaging but I know they're not gonna do that again but I do I really like this growing up as a kid you walk into Walmart or Kmart or wherever you got them and you always got to see them in their alternate mode I don't know of very many G1 characters that weren't in the alternate mode but anyway now for the uh, this is a, a G1 reissue um, the one thing you will notice if you if you can see he is inside of a bubble I went ahead and bought an aftermarket bubble for him so that he stayed in there more without the uh, little plastic ties. But Autobot Blaster on the front. You got a nice image of him, almost a full image. Um, and then him in the robot mode. And then, of course, on top, it's got him transforming kind of the function, the different things you're going to do to get him into robot mode. On the side, obviously him in boombox mode and then alternate in robot mode. And then once again, a great battle scene for all the Autobots and Decepticons on the back. And tech spec at the bottom. The one thing missing from this that I liked at the other ones were the robot points that you used to use for melons. Where you could get lots of good giveaways, um, transformers, different things like that. And on the, on the side over here, again, another picture of him in boombox mode and one in robot. And then on the bottom, Transformers, Autobot Blaster. And then him with his gun. And I thought he had one of the coolest guns of any of the toys when I was growing up. I'm not sure. It just it was so big. It just looked really cool in his hand. So those are the two packaging. The differences between the two. Um, I think they did a really good job on, on this Legacy. Blaster, I think the look is really good. And now I'm going to get these in uh, robot mode and kind of show you the difference in between those two. Alright, so here they are in robot mode each with cassette. Now this version of Blaster actually was the uh, the set that came with Perceptor, but it's nearly identical to the to the reissue that I had in the box. So I'm using him in, in bot mode so I don't have, we're in trying to tra transform him because I don't want to take the other one out of the bubble. Um, but this way I do also get a, you can get a close up of uh, Eject and what it looked like in G1 versus what it looks like now. So I guess we'll start on them. This is the Legacy Eject, like I said, he was he's translucent. He is well designed, and he has the same little kind of features as the uh, the G1. But the G1 is is a bit taller, and I never understood this whole the way he held his guns versus pulling his hands down from the bottom. Um, but either way, I like both of them. But I do actually like the way that the uh, the new one transforms. I think it transforms a little bit more solid. Um, I have had issues with some of these falling over in the past, maybe because of the size of the gun. And there we go. Stand up. So there is the Legacy Eject. 
Not a bad figure at all. A little bit more detail or a little bit more close-up of the, uh, the G1 reissue. And this is a reissue. This is the one that came with the blaster that came with Perceptor and a couple other cassettes. I can't remember on, on the G1 if they had silver and gold in the Autobot, or was that just a Decepticon thing? I can't remember. Um, I do like that it had the bendable legs and the toes, but I never understood this whole flip-down arm thing, but he actually held his guns, so I always keep these folded in. Anyway, there is... G1 or reissue, eject. Get out of the way. Now for Blaster himself. Obviously you can see a, quite a bit difference in size from the two. Um, the detail overall is really good. The, the detail in the Legacy and the way that they made him transform I think is really good. But I do miss the height. I miss how much bigger he was. Although in the G1 the, the Blaster was taller than most figures. I mean if he... He towered over Optimus Prime like you wouldn't believe, but in the cartoon they were nearly the same size until he transformed into Boombox and shrunk. But so we'll go into the Legacy Blaster. Kind of see his gun, and you can kind of see the G1. Very similar look. He does have the Autobot crest on his on his uh, tape deck. And it does open up nicely, and the eject does fit in there really well. Um, he does have an additional set of speakers on his leg, whereas the original Blaster only had the, the two on the front there, where he's got them here, and then he's got the one over here with the speaker cover on it. In the back, I think. That's the oh, dial. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I do like the, I like the legs better. I kind of like the black in here versus the G1 that was just all solid silver. And I was kind of hoping he would have more fingers, but he does, does have a hole just like uh, the original to hold the gun. Um, to pop the cassette, you just push the, the buttons in. And I believe on the G1, it's you push it down, if I remember right. There we go. Push the first one down. It's been a while since I've messed with him. Um, once again, the, the tape deck itself, they look almost identical. Uh, this one here is a little bit darker. It's like it's been tinted, but I do like, I like the look of this better, but I do like being able to see the cassette in the, yeah, make it more visual in the G1 look. Um, one of the other things too is that the arms, I've always transformed mine like this, but I know there's other people that turn the, the arms in sideways and have it to where you can't see the, the slider for the fist, but I've liked mine where the, you almost have that same look as you do here, um, when it's in robot mode. Here it is, the back of it. You can see the uh, the knobs and the dials. And to me, that looks a little bit like a jetpack. I'm not 100% sure if it is, but uh, it's, it's a good looking character. They did a good job on the head sculpt. Kind of get that in there. There we go. And now for the G1. Or the reissue. Uh, once again, you can kind of see the difference in the feet. The feet are more stable on this one, where the, these were just a, a flip down. I think I've never had mine not stand very well. Um, I think the stick, the sticker detail is pretty good on this. Once again, the hands just a hole in the hand. A little bit more detailed on the legacy figure, but like I said, there are people that I've seen have them transform more like this. But I've always done mine like this, just so he has the sticker showing. Just make it look more like it did to me in the cartoon. That's just my opinion. On the back, it's pretty dull. There's not much going on on the uh, G1 figure. None of that detail you saw on the, on, the, on the Legacy. But it is a good head sculpt. Almost looks like he's smiling there. And then, like I sent you on the, the translucent window where you can actually see the cassette on the G1 Blaster versus on the uh, Legacy. Oh, and then once again, the rub symbol, which is kind of an awkward place for it, but the G1, of course, had that. Just so you could tell that it was an authentic G1 Transformer. 
and we'll get these in the uh, alternate mode and show you the differences in that. Okay, so here they are in their boom box or alternate mode. And this is where the Legacy, I believe, surpasses the G1 look in almost every category. I do like the bigger, I like how much bigger that the G1 is than the Legacy, but just the overall look. And if you can kind of see here, all the knobs and the and the, the outline, the details, to me, this just looks better. Um, and I'll, obviously in the world today that we live in, this is more of a kind of like a size you would carry around versus something, you know, like this in the old days where you would carry this on your shoulder and this would be a huge and these would be like eight inch woofers or 10 inch or whatever. But the detail on the legacy figure is just, in my opinion, just amazing. And even, even the back, although there's not a whole lot going on, it, it looks better. So we'll look at the legacy first and the cassette is in there. And if you can see, you can't see through the window as well as you can on this one where it actually looks like you can see the cassette in there. Um, you can see it a little, but you can't, not a lot. You get it in the right light, you can actually see it. But he does fit in there well. It, it locks well. Push it open, it, everything functions well. All of these knobs that you see, none, they're not functional, none of them work, but just the, the look of it, um, to me, it looks a lot better. And I wasn't a big fan of the speaker cover because G1 didn't have it, but I think it really looks good on this. Um, the handle and everything, I mean, it transforms very similar, but not near, not exactly the same. And then, of course, your 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 feet fold in like they do in the other one, but they're a lot more stable. They, they click in place a lot better. And then you do have the side speaker where you did not have one on G1. Um, I just I just can't get over the, the way the front looks. It's just amazing. Anyway, get it on top view. So the handle's very sturdy. Um, the, it clicks into place really, really well. The bottom, not much going on there, but not much going on on this one either. So it's a, it's a very st sturdy, very stable item. Um, I like this. The Legacy figure I like both in robot and in alternate mode, but I still like G1, still a diehard fan, but I, I really do. This is one of those figures that I had to buy, and I actually had to buy two of them so i've got this one this was the kingdom one this is the uh, legacy but they're identical so there he is in the legacy mode and here is g1 and one of the things i never did like were the, these would sometimes get loose and pop out on you and a lot of times the black handle would get it would slide off or like we were broke as a kid so the, all the ones i had were from garage sales and that was usually missing or it was broken um, obviously these are in good shape because these are reissues and don't really play with the toys anymore. We just use them for videos or to stare at. So, like so G1, little fake, you know, the stickers down here for your tweeters, whereas he actually has a cutout with a black insert. A, a fake knob to some, some extent, just like on the Legacy, but it's not black. I wish some of this detail had been done in with either a sticker or a paint or you know something like that the speakers do look good i thought they've always looked pretty good you've got some knobs on the side not much going on on top and the one thing i do like about the legacy versus the g1 is that the head is completely hidden in legacy and in g1 it's you know, obviously it's just kind of right there but wasn't bad for a toy that came out in 84 85 whatever it was and then so that's kind of the detail between the two, the G1 versus the Legacy, and I only compare them because this one looks so closely to what it originally looked like. Um, I just had to buy it, and I actually had to buy two. I had to buy one both in the Kingdom box and one in the Legacy box. And and then also with Blaster, we've got the one in the G1 reissue that looks like the original G1, and then I've also got this one that came in the, uh, the comp combiner set with uh, Perceptor. So those are the two. So if you would, if you did like the video, please help us keep growing it. We're trying to get as many subscribers as we can. And hit that subscribe button. Hit that playback button so you can follow us on videos. And we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.